Mathematics, the Universe and the Human Eye Part 2. The Universe? Our science nowadays are more science fiction, not real investigations. Because they are all based on the mathematical universe and not on the real physical universe. The fact is we have two universes. The mathematical universe, built and designed by NASA. And our physical universe, which we can see by day and night with our own eyes. Even without the Hubble telescope. What is the mathematical universe, with simple words, a computer program, a simulated representation of our universe? No, not of our. Only the mathematical universe what NASA tried to make us believe it really exists outside the computer. Since we have connected mathematics and computers, we are in a position to simulate everything. And this is what we do in every area you can imagine. We are masters of mathematical simulation. But does a simulation really show us the past or the future? Is this the absolute truth? What about the so-called coincidences? Are these really all coincidences or maybe calculations? Calculations which were made to clarify things or to prove the own theories? What I mean by this, let me give you an example. The size of the sun and the moon. By Fraser Kane. In absolute terms, the sun and the moon could not be more different in size. The sun measures 1.4 million kilometer across, while the moon is a mere 3,474 kilometers across. 
In other words, the Sun is roughly 400 times larger than the Moon. But the Sun also happens to be 400 times further away than the Moon, and this has created an amazing coincidence. From our perspective, the Sun and the Moon look almost exactly the same size. This is why we can have solar eclipses, where the Moon passes in front of the Sun, just barely obscuring it from our view. And this is just a coincidence. The gravitational interaction between the Moon and the Earth, the tides, are causing the Moon to slowly drift away from the Earth at a rate of 3.8 centimeters per year. In the ancient past, the Moon would have looked much larger than the Sun. And in the far future, the Moon will look much smaller. It has just a happy coincidence that they look the same size from our perspective. Article updated, 24th of December, 2015. But with what certainty we can say how the Moon looked in the past? Or what is to be seen in the future? With a simulation, we really simulate the future? The size of the Sun and the Moon and also their distances are coincidences? Or perhaps scientists have only calculated the universe known to us. Let me give you three more coincidences in our solar system. 1. Ancient astronomy seems to predict knowledge of atoms only discovered in 1913. In antiquity, the planets were associated with seven known metals. The planets were also arranged in a traditional order. In 1913, Henry Gwynne Jeffreys Mosley discovered a way to measure atomic number, thus numbering the elements. The traditional ordering of the planets, common thousands of years before Mosley's discovery, corresponds to the order of elements Mosley discovered. This coincidence is featured in the book A Little Book of Coincidence in the Solar System by John Martineau. 2. Patterns within the stars and galaxies appear to line up with the direction of our Sun's motion. Dragan Hooterer, a physics professor at the University of Michigan and a theoretical cosmologist, explains in an astronomy article how some patterns observed in the universe are either astounding coincidences or are signs of a structure beyond science's current understanding of the solar system and the universe. He looks at cosmic microwave background, which is a snapshot of the early universe. Photons, protons, and electrons swarmed in a dense mass in the early universe. That mass was then released to travel through the cosmos. Hooterer describes the cosmic microwave background as a fog of microwave photons coming at us from all directions, filling the entire universe. An analysis of the warm and cool spots of this fog reveals basic patterns. These patterns show certain alignments that have less than a 0.1% likelihood of happening by chance, says Hooterer. Kate Land and Joao Ijo of Imperial College in London have, for example, found some enigmatic temperature alignments within the cosmic microwave background and also alignments with the motion of our Sun through space. They have humorously dubbed this odd alignment apparently the same one we found the axis of evil comes says Hooterer. He writes, many cosmologists find the various CMB, cosmic microwave background, alignments extremely unlikely to have occurred by chance. Moreover, Nearly all the alignments point to the solar system's motion or the orientation of the ecliptic plane. Is there a deeper explanation? Question mark. 3. Measurements correspond mathematically in strange ways. Radius of the Moon equals 1080 miles equals 3 by 360. Radius of the Earth equals 3960 miles equals 11 by 360. Radius of Earth plus radius of Moon equals 5,040 miles equals 1 by 2 by 3 by 4 by 5 by 6 by 7 equals 7 by 8 by 9 by 10. Diameter of Earth equals 7,930 miles equals 8 by 9 by 10 by 11. There are 5,280 feet in a mile equals 10 by 11 by 12 by 13, 9 by 10 by 11 by 12. This coincidence is also featured by Martineau, the measurements were verified by Epoch Times. I hope you can understand that you could say these coincidences are just because the whole universe were calculated. And these coincidences are mathematical formulas, on which the mathematical universe is based. Let's hear a word about computer security at NASA.
This is going a little bit beyond the scope of the, the, the uh, event here today, but the bottom line is that, yes, we are very much aware of um, systems being hacked, uh, and NASA, of course, is, uh, is a major target. Uh, the fact that we have one of the largest supercomputers in the world is a major target as well. So we do, we're not going to get into the details here, but of course there are very strict processes and, and, and how and who can get onto these systems. And, the, and those same security um, levels that we have in order to get to a system, not only of accessing the system, but also making sure that uh, that a user A cannot access user B's data, for instance. So there, there are two kinds of things. One is whether someone has access to the system, and even if they have, they're only allowed access to their portion of the system. That same, uh, those same restrictions and those same processes are also followed for access to the D-Wave system. And if I, if I may, I will pause that for a later discussion at another time. Thank you. Yes, these precautions must be given when my computers contain our entire universe. Sorry, our entire mathematical universe. And everyone knows what is a computer network. Or? So NASA has two major networks. 1. The Space Network, SN, was established in the early 1980s to replace NASA's worldwide network of ground tracking stations. 2. The Deep Space Network when it comes to making a long-distance call, it's hard to top NASA's Deep Space Network. It has the largest and most sensitive scientific telecommunications system in the world. The Deep Space Network, or DSN, is NASA's international array of giant radio antennas that supports interplanetary spacecraft missions, plus a few that orbit Earth. The DSN also provides radar and radio astronomy observations that improve our understanding of the solar system and the larger universe. The DSN is operated by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, which also operates many of the agency's interplanetary robotic space missions. The DSN consists of three facilities spaced equidistant from each other approximately 120 degrees apart in longitude around the world. These sites are at Goldstone, near Barstow, California, near Madrid, Spain, and near Canberra, Australia. The strategic placement of these sites permits constant communication with spacecraft as our planet rotates before a distant spacecraft sinks below the horizon at one DSN site, another site can pick up the signal and carry on communicating. The antennas of the Deep Space Network are the indispensable link to explorers venturing beyond Earth. They provide the crucial connection for commanding our spacecraft and receiving their never-before-seen images and scientific information on Earth, propelling our understanding of the universe, our solar system and ultimately, our place within it. Everything NASA wants to do in space is simulated several times before it goes to the right mission. But what tells us that the right mission is not just one more simulation? Ah, yes, our satellites. We also see satellite imagery from our universe. And the ISS our outer space station. The space must be true. 2013 NASA had a problem with the live stream from the ISS. The live stream was supported on an Intel Pentium 3. The full boot operation takes 3.30 minutes. To make it not so boring, I play it with 12 times speed. For people who want to see the full boot process, I will play the video in original speed at the end of part 2. Satellite imagery, we do not need to talk about satellite images. It is a fact that all these are not photographers. It's all computer created images also called CGI. Robert Simon at NASA says. My role is to make imagery from Earth Sciences data. I turn data into pictures. I look for new, interesting events that NASA's satellites have seen or that are hidden in the latest data to find anything interesting that shows off NASA's unique capabilities. Finding things is the fun part. I rely on engineers and scientists to produce the data. They're reliable, real-time. Stream of 1.7 terabytes a day is incredible the same as producing 3,000 CDs a day. Robert Simon, a.k.a. Mr. Blue Marble. June 12, 2012. Wow. 
I do not want to say with all this that the universe does not exist. The universe known to us, exists in the computers of NASA, was mathematically calculated and computer programmed. And is only real at NASA's computer and network. You can imagine it like a big game platform in the internet, or simulations platform like Google Earth. There is no scientist or satellite owner, which have a direct connection to a satellite. Everything goes via the NASA's network. And that your iPhone or TV does not connect to a satellite. You really should know. Space Machines Do Not Orbit the Earth By Wild Heretic, April 21, 2013, Trouble in Space There are three very serious problems with the orbiting mechanism of the space machine said to whiz around the Earth. These need to be incorporated within our reality framework to help us determine what is actually real and what is marketing. 1. The Thermosphere 2. The Orbiting Mechanism 3. Fake Footage We are told most satellites orbit the Earth at altitudes of over 500 km to avoid atmospheric drag, with a few circling in medium Earth orbit which goes up to 35,786 km. As you can see, all three objects above are in the seriously ferocious hot zone. Apart from nothing working at the minimum 600 degrees Celsius due to thermal expansion of the materials, iron glows red hot at 500 degrees Celsius. Some of the electronic components like lead, zinc, and epoxy resin will not just burn out, but melt. The solar panels which adjourn these machines would barely function even if they could keep it together long enough. A British company found a drop of 1.1% of peak output for every increase in degrees Celsius of photovoltaic solar panels once the panels reached 42 degrees Celsius, and of course at 1414 degrees Celsius silicon actually melts. But wait the Hubble telescope and satellites uses gallium arsenide instead of silicon which melts at an even lower temperature of 1238 degrees Celsius. I could go on. But you get the picture. So how do those solar panels work? How does anything work and why do satellites, the Hubble telescope, ISS etc. not melt during a day of high solar activity? The second article. Hubble and the International Space Station hoax by Wild Heretic, May 2, 2013, Prelude, Trouble in Space. There are three types of machines said to be in Earth orbit. We have already determined that there is no orbit. Before we look at the possible placement mechanism, let us first look at the two most well-known machines said to be up there, and determine if they are likely the real deal. 1. Hubble Space Telescope 2. International Space Station Hubble Space Telescope Below are two columns of pictures. One contains images exclusively from the Hubble Telescope the other those from Earth-based observatories. Which column shows pictures from the Hubble telescope? The images in the column on the left are from observatories, whilst those on the right are from the Hubble telescope. Apart from all the images being very similar, or identical, they are often composites of three or more pictures each captured through a separate light filter and then processed further. On top of that, since NASA fake stars and obviously entire images of machines orbiting space, then processing a galaxy in Photoshop isn't he exactly revolutionary. These days, they have allowed us to use their online software to touch up raw Hubble images ourselves. They even provide a PDF of instructions. Courtesy of their own YouTube channel, we can compare raw Hubble images and those after processing. Gosh, those images are nearly identical not. You can even choose your own color. I wonder if this could be the real Hubble telescope below? Is the movement across the sky too much for the several minutes of exposure necessary to capture images? It would seem so, although it is probably more a detector than a true optical telescope. I'd love to see how a free-falling Hubble telescope in space stays exactly in one place to the millimeter in order to capture its long exposure times. It is supposed to be at orbital speed which is 7,600 meters per second. This Earth-based motionless observatory image is a composite of three images over 12, 9, and 7 minutes of exposure. In 12 minutes the Hubble Space Telescope will have traveled 5,472 kilometers an eighth of the way around the world. 
International Space Station. Which screenshots below of the various videos of the ISS are fake? Answer, all of them. But officially, number 2 and 3. There is also the problem of to rotate, or not to rotate question mark. So I could give you more examples from this article. But I believe you can recognize my point. I recommend you to read it this article through. To get a real idea about, what is wrong in space or better our universe. The link address you find in the video sources. If something or someone connects to space, it's always via a computer. And the computer was programmed anyway. So what does it tell the computer user, is that reality? Or a computer program, a simulated representation of our universe with all its parts? Yes there are parts from the mathematical universe, outside the computer. Like all the things we can see with our eyes or with a normal telescope in the sky. And yes some things exist in airplanes, on balloons, in a swimming pool and in the NASA film studios. Of course everything is directed at NASA who were the obstetricians of their universe. But perhaps these things have only been created to support the elucidated mathematical universe. Even the fact that you can see stars and planets with the naked eye has to tell you that these cannot be millions of kilometers away. Why do stars and planets look so different when I see them under the telescope? Have you ever seen a star under a normal telescope? Here is one. be continued. NASA ISS Stream Computer Reboot ISS NASA Ustream Live Feed Gone Wrong The stream is supposed to look like this. Ustream at June 12, 2013 NASA are still using Intel's Pentium 3C+. Even NASA computers need to be turned off and on again.
Buzz and H Films 2013. Thank you for watching.